Goku getting your over one starter protagonist is whoa 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 just take it easy take it easy okay i know some of you i i know some of you are still mad over the last spark and zero video but just just calm down put the guns down and hear me out and please watch the video to the end of this time okay okay now look i did not expect that video to get that much attention but i knew it would provoke some people in the spark and zero community and as the great son Goku says, Don't f with Dragon Ball fans, they can't read. But I'll address all of that at the end of the video. Despite my concerns about the game, there are some legitimate things that I actually like about Spark and Zero. And that's what today's video will be focused on. So strap yourselves in for a more positive video on Spark and Zero. Well, mostly. Here are the things that Spark and Zero is doing right. Now, the first thing that Spark and Zero did right is the character roster. Despite my criticisms about it not including any Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball GT characters, I still admire the selections they picked out. The number of characters from Dragon Ball Super is hella strong. Of course, we got a good number of Gokus and Vegetas, especially that Ultra Instinct, but I'm just glad to see Kale and Caulifla in their base forms and in their Super Saiyan forms as well. Also, it's about time we finally got base form Kefla. There's also Jiren, Dispo, Tapo, as well as the pretty cure wannabes. So yeah, Spark and Zero has an amazing amount of characters from Super. I still can't believe it's one character above Budokai Tenkaichi 3's roster. Now, as for the Dragon Ball Z selection, I don't think I need to go through all that since it's quite obvious that the majority of characters from Z who were also in Budokai Tenkaichi 3 will return for Spark and Zero. I do wish they could have put in a few more few movie characters like Cooler, Bojack, Zanya, Android 13, Basha, etc. But with what we have now, I appreciate this large roster of characters so far. Another thing that Spark and Zero did right is the graphics and the colors of the game. As much as I admire Dragon Ball Fighters graphics, Spark and Zero takes it up to a whole new level. The character models look amazing and the stages are wonderful to look at. Spark and Zero is looking to be a very beautiful and colorful game to enjoy. The amount of detail put into these stages is something I can commend the devs on. I think the battles in this game it will be very wild and breathtaking. And that leads us to the third thing that I like about this game. Now, I hate to be pretty rude, but I do not give two fucks about the online multiplayer. After my experience on playing Xenoverse 2 online, there's no way in hell I am touching Spark and Zero's online mode unless I'm playing with friends. But that's if I ever get PlayStation Plus again. The Spark and Zero community is already toxic enough for the most part. I'm not going to deal with toxic toxicity online. Now, local multiplayer is what I'll be looking forward to the most. Yes, despite my criticisms of it, I will be enjoying it when my cousin gets it. It does suck that it's similar to Xenoverse 1's local multiplayer, where not only you play in the hyperbolic time chamber, but you also have to pick characters one at a time. But at the very least, it's split screen just like the olden days. And it's nice to fight in the hyperbolic time chamber without dealing with, with any destructions. Hopefully they'll add more maps to it because fighting in only one map is only going to get stale. But with what we have now, I can get used to it. And I just want to address this since I already know people are going to misconstrue what I said previously about local multiplayer. I am not saying this game has to be delayed to finish local multiplayer. I said that Bandai Namco should have when they had the chance or just not include it if it was too much of a hassle to deal with. I'm well aware that it's too late for them to turn back. Plus, I did say in the video that hopefully they'll add major updates to it. But of course, some of these fans can't handle a 13 minute long video. Am I right? Don't f*** with Dragon Ball fans, they can't read. Also to add to it, was it really hard to use static images for the character select screen? I'm sorry, but I still think the character select screen is bad. And finally, to put a nail in the coffin, most of the people coming at me about local multiplayer aren't even going to use it anyway. So why bother complaining about me criticizing local multiplayer? But regardless, I'm still looking forward to it. And they did the right thing by bringing it into Spark and Zero. Another thing that I like as well is the episode battle mode. It's kind of like Dragon Universe from Budokai 3. Basically, you choose one of the eight characters and you play through their perspectives of the Dragon Ball Z and Super stories. However, the one thing that really interests me is the feature where you choose which action to take, basically altering the story to make it different from the anime. This is something I find very intriguing. 
You also get to experience the first person view in certain cutscenes, which is a very nice touch. This does lead to this important question. Will this be the story mode or will it be separate from the actual story mode? I guess we'll find out once the game comes out. Either way, this will be a pretty cool mode to play when I get it on sale for myself. So I'm very interested in this mode. I'm also interested in the other mode, which is custom battle. This is pretty much where you can create your own battles. At first, I was a bit confused about this mode, but this is pretty much like the what if battles in Tenkaichi 2, 3 and Rage and Blast 1. Only difference is you are creating these dream battles, like a Super Saiyan God battle between Goku and Vegeta. Or you can make Gotenks vs Gogeta, Vegito vs Kefla, Videl vs Android 18, any fights you could think of, you can make it happen. So I think this will be a long lasting feature for everyone to use. Last but not least is the tournament mode. You can either choose which tournament you want to go with, or create your own tournament with your own rule sets. They brought back most of the tournaments, I'm so glad they did that, but they've also added the tournament of destroyers and the tournament of power, which is a very nice addition. The only thing that's missing is the World Martial Arts Big Tournament. Yeah, I know, it was from the Bojack Unbound movie and we don't have any movie characters in the game, but I still would have liked to play in that tournament again in Spark and Zero. Regardless, I can still have fun creating my own tournaments and that's all that matters. What also matters is you subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. For years, we have waited for a proper sequel to Budokai Senkaichi 3. The wait was long overdue as it's been 17 years. I remember playing the Budokai Tenkaichi series at the age of 10. And now 14 years later, I still consider Tenkaichi 3 as the best Dragon Ball game of all time. However, Spark and Zero could potentially share the crown with its predecessor. When the game was first teased, I was very cautious about it given how Spike Chunsoft and Bandai Namco handled Jump Force. However, after the amount of trailers being given to us, that cautious feeling slowly drifted away. In my last video, I was worried about the game and the weird practices from Bandai Namco, and I'm still worried just like many others, but I'll see how the game turns out when it releases. I just hope it has a successful launch day, especially considering that it's releasing on the exact same day as Dragon Ball Daima, which is hella crazy. So it's very clear cool that us Dragon Ball fans are going to be eating good next month. I can't wait to see the first episode of Dragon Ball Daima, and I can't wait to see Spark and Zero shine and hopefully become the video game of the year. A job well done, Spark Chunsoft. Now, I want to give a massive thank you to not only those who enjoyed the video, but also agreed on some of the points I've made. I also thank the ones who gave out good and legitimate criticism towards the video as it did change my perspective on a few things such as the release date and how it's being handled. While I appreciate the constructive criticism, I pretty much proved that some of these fans are either delusional or just can't even bother to sit down and fully watch the video till the very end. People like this need to be studied. It's stupid enough to see mine and other people's criticism as quote nitpicks, even if they're not game breaking, but shitting and flexing on people who either criticize the $70 price tag or just can't afford it right now. That's the kind of loser shit I expected from these toxic fans. These kinds of people are just putting a bad image on the Spark and Zero community at this point. Look, if you're buying the game, that's totally fine. It doesn't matter what edition you're going for. That's totally fine if you're buying the game, but don't act so toxic towards others. What you all need to understand is that we all care about Spark and Zero and we all want this game to be successful. Even though it's a gate criticism and quote nitpicks, there are other Dragon Ball fans that are also worried about how it will turn out. You can disagree with the points I said in my last Spark and Zero video, that's totally fine. However, everyone's allowed to have an opinion on the game. And if you can't respectfully disagree with someone's opinion, that's your problem. But I will end the video with this happy note. While I do think the hate is dumb, I still appreciate the few who gave good constructive criticism and those who enjoyed and agreed on some of the points I've made in the video. With that being said, type down in the comment section on what aspect of Spark and Zero are you excited or worried about the game? I'll be reading the comments so you better be civil and respectful. We do not tolerate hate or disrespect around here. But that's all for me today. Until then, this is Star the Protagonist signing out. As always, Goki Genyo, and have a star day, everyone. If you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to like, 
comment, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to join the Star Nation. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter, and while you're at it, check out my previous video. Now.